This reading of Christ the Mediator of the New Covenant by Thomas Watson is from the Free Grace Broadcaster magazine entitled Christ the Mediator, issue number 183, and is produced by Stillwater's Revival Books. Christ the Mediator of the New Covenant by Thomas Watson Quote, Jesus the Mediator of the New Covenant End quote Taken from Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 Jesus Christ is the sum and quintessence of the gospel The wonder of angels and the joy of triumphant saints The name of Christ is sweet it is as music in the ear, honey in the mouth, and a cordial at the heart. I shall waive the context and only speak of that which concerns our present purpose. Having discoursed of the covenant of grace, I shall speak now of the mediator of the covenant and the restorer of lapsed sinners. Quote, Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, end quote. There are several names and titles in Scripture given to Christ as the great restorer of mankind. 1. Sometimes he is called a Savior. Quote, His name shall be called Jesus. End quote. From Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. The Hebrew word for Jesus signifies a Savior, and whom he saves from hell he saves from sin. Where Christ is a Savior, he is a sanctifier. Quote, he shall save his people from their sins, end quote, from Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. There is no other Savior, quote, neither is there salvation in any other, end quote, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. As there was but one ark to save the world from drowning, so there is but one Jesus to save sinners from damning. As Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, quote, are there yet nor any more sons in thy in my womb, end quote, from Ruth chapter 1 verse 11. So has God any other sons in the womb of his eternal decree to be saviors to us beside Christ? Quote, where shall wisdom be found? The depth saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, it is not with me, end quote. Taken from Job chapter 28 verse 12 and 14. Where shall salvation be found? The angel says, it is not in me. Mortality says it is not in me. The ordinance says it is not in me. Christ alone is the wellspring of life. Quote, neither is there salvation in any other. End quote. 2. Sometimes Christ is called a Redeemer. Quote, the Redeemer shall come to Sion. End quote. From Isaiah chapter 59 verse 20. Some understand it of Cyrus, others of an angel, but the most ancient Jewish doctors understood it of Christ, the Redeemer of the elect. Quote, My Redeemer liveth. End quote. Job chapter 19 verse 25. The Hebrew word for Redeemer signifies such a one as is near a kin and has right to redeem a mortgage. So Christ is near of kin to us, being our elder brother, therefore has the best right to redeem us. 3. Christ is called a mediator in the text. Quote, Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, end quote. The Greek word for mediator signifies a middle person, one that makes up the breach between two disagreeing parties. God and we were at variance by sin. Now Christ mediates and becomes umpire between us. He reconciles us to God through his blood, Therefore, he is called the mediator of the new covenant. There is no way of communion and intercourse between God and man, but in through a mediator. Christ takes away the enmity in us, the wrath of God, and so makes peace. Nor is Christ a mediator or of reconciliation only, but intercession. Quote, Christ is entered not into the holy place made with hands, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. End quote. From Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24. When the priest had slain the sacrifice, he was to go with the blood before the altar and mercy seat and show it to the Lord. Now in Christ our blessed mediator consider two things. 
1. His person, and 2. His graces. A. His person. His person is amiable. He is made up of all love and beauty. He is the effigy of his father, quote, the express image of his person, end quote. Hebrews, from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Consider, 1. Christ's person in two natures. A. Look upon his human nature as incarnate. The Valentians deny his human nature. But John, chapter 1, verse 14, says, quote, The word was made flesh. End quote. It is spoken of Christ, he, the promised Messiah. Christ took our flesh, that same nature which sinned might suffer. And, quote, the word was made flesh, end quote, that through the glass of his human nature we might look upon God. Why is Christ called the word? Because, as a word is the interpreter of the mind and reveals what is in man's breasts, so Jesus Christ reveals his Father's mind to us concerning the great matters of our salvation. John chapter 1 verse 1 Were it not for Christ's manhood, the sight of the Godhead would be formidable to us. But through Christ's flesh we may look upon God without terror. And Christ took our flesh, that he might know how to pity us. He knows what it is to be faint and sorrowful and tempted. Quote, he knows our frame, end quote, from Psalms 103, verse 14. And he took our flesh that he might, as Augustine says, ennoble our human nature with honor. Christ, having marred our flesh, has exalted it above the angelic nature. B. Look upon Christ's divine nature. Christ may be fitly compared to Jacob's ladder, which reaches from earth to heaven. Generation, Genesis chapter 28, verse 12. Christ's human nature was the foot of the ladder which stood upon earth, his divine nature the top of the ladder which reaches to heaven. This being a grand article of our faith, I shall amplify it. I know the Arians, the Socarians, the Ebonites, they would rob Christ of the best jewel, best jewel of his crown, his Godhead. But the apostolical Nicene Athanasian Creed affirm Christ's deity, and to this the churches of Helvetia, Bohemia, Wittenberg, Transylvania, etc., give their full consent. The scripture is clear for it. He is called, quote, the mighty God, end quote, from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Quote, and in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead, end quote, from Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. He is of the same nature and essence with the Father. So Anastasius, Basil, Christendom, is God the Father called Almighty? So is Christ, quote, the Almighty, end quote, from Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Is God the Father the heart searcher? So is Christ, quote, he knew their thoughts, end quote, from John chapter 2, verse 25. Is God the Father omnipresent? So is Christ, quote, the Son of Man which is in heaven, end quote. John chapter 3, verse 13. Christ as God was then in heaven, when as man he was upon the earth. Is Christ eternal? Christ is the everlasting Father. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 may be urged against the Serinthian heretics, who denied the pre-existence of Christ's Godhead, but held that Christ had no being till he departed derived it from the Virgin Mary. Does divine worship along belong to the first person in the Trinity? So does to Christ. John chapter 5 verse 23. Quote, Let all the angels of God worship him. End quote. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. Is creation proper to the deity? This is a flower of Christ's crown. Quote, By him were all things created. End quote. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. Is invocation proper to the deity? This is given to Christ. Quote, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. End quote. From Acts chapter 7 verse 59. Is recumbency and trust peculiar to God the Father? This is given to Christ. Quote, Ye believe in God? 
believe also in me. End quote from John chapter 14 verse 1. Christ must needs be God. Not only that the divine nature might support the human from sinking under God's wrath, but also to give value and weight to his sufferings. Christ being God, his death and passion are meritous. Christ's blood is called the blood of God. In Acts chapter 20 verse 28, because the person who was offered in sacrifice was God as well as man. This is an invincible support to believers. It was God who was offended, and it was God who satisfied. Thus, Christ's person in two natures. 2. Consider Christ's two natures in one person, God-man. Quote, God manifest in the flesh. End quote. 1 Titus chapter 3 verse 16. Christ had a twofold substance, divine and human, yet not a twofold subsistence. Both natures make but one Christ. A sky may be grafted into another tree, a pear tree into an apple, which, though it bears different fruits, is but one tree. So Christ's manhood is united to the Godhead in an ineffable manner. Yet, though these are two natures, yet but one person. This union of the two natures in Christ was not transmission, transmutation. The divine nature changed into the human, or the human into the divine, nor my mixture. The two natures mingled together as wine and water are mixed, but both the natures of Christ remain distinct, and yet make not two distinct persons, but one person. The human nature not God, yet one with God. B. Consider Christ our mediator in his graces. These are the sweet savour of his ointments that make the virgins love him. Christ, our blessed mediator, is said to be, quote, full of grace and truth, end quote, from John chapter 1, verse 14. He had the anointing of the Spirit without measure, John chapter 3, verse 30, 34. Grace in Christ is after a more eminent and glorious manner than it is in any of the saints. 1. Jesus Christ, our mediator, has perfection in every grace. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. He is the penelope, magazine and storehouse of all tre heavenly treasure, all fullness. This no saint on earth has. He may excel in one grace, but not on all. As Abraham was eminent for faith, Moses for meekness. But Christ excels in every grace. 2. There is a never-failing fullness of grace in Christ. Grace in the saints is ebbing and flowing. It is not always the same degree in proportion. At one time David's faith was strong, at another time so faint and weak that you could hardly feel any pulse. Quote, I said I am cut off from before thine eyes. End quote. Psalms 31 verse 22. But grace in Christ is a never-failing fullness. It never abated in the, last, the least degree and never lost a drop of his holiness. What was said of Joseph in Gen Genesis 49 verse 23 may more truly be applied to Christ. Quote, the archers shot at him but his bow abode in strength. End quote. Men and devils shot at him but his grace remained in its full vigor and strength. Quote, his bow abode in strength. End quote. 3. Grace in Christ is communicative. His grace is for us. The holy oil of the Spirit was poured on the head of his blessed Aaron, that it might run down upon us. The saints have not grace to bestow on others. When the foolish virgins would have brought bought oil of their neighbor virgins, saying, quote, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. End quote. Matthew chapter 25 verse 8. The wise virgin answered, quote, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. End quote. The saints have no grace to spare for others, but Christ diffuses his grace to others. Grace in the saints is as water in the vessel. Grace in Christ is as water in the spring. Quote, of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. End quote. From John chapter 1, verse 16. Set a glass under a sill, and it receives water from it, drop by drop. 
so the saints have the drops and influences of Christ's grace distilling upon them. What a rich consolation is this to those who either have no grace or their stock is low. They may go to Christ the Mediator as a treasury of grace. Lord, I am indigent, but whether shall I carry my empty vessel but to a full fountain? Quote, All my springs are in thee. End quote. Psalms chapter 87 verse 7 I am guilty, thou hast blood to pardon me. I am polluted. Thou hast grace to cleanse me. I am sick unto death. Thou hast the balm of Gilead to heal me. Joseph opened all the storehouses of corn. Christ is our Joseph that opens all the treasuries and storehouses of grace and communicates to us. He is not only sweet as the honeycomb, but drops as the honeycomb. In Christ, our mediator, there is a cornucopia and fullness of all grace. And Christ is desirous that we should come to him for grace, like the full breast that arches till be drawn. Use 1. Admire the glory of this mediator. He is God-man. He is coessentially glorious with the Father. All the Jews that saw Christ in the flesh did not see this his Godhead. All that saw the man did not see the Messiah. The temple of Solomon within was embellished with gold. Travelers, as they passed along, might see the outside of the temple, but only the priests saw the glory which sparkled within the temple. So believers only, who are made priests unto God, see Christ's glory inside, the Godhead shining through the manhood. Revelations chapter 1 verse 16 Use 2 If Christ be God-man in one person, then look unto Jesus Christ alone for salvation. There must be something of the Godhead to fasten our hope upon. In Christ there is Godhead and manhood, hypostatically united. If we could weep rivers of tears, out fast Moses on the mount, if we were exact moralists, touching the law blameless, if we could arrive at the highest degree of sanctification in this life, all this would not save us without looking to the merits of him who is God. Our perfect holiness in heaven is not the cause of our salvation, but the righteousness of Jesus Christ. To this, therefore, did Paul flee, as to the horns of the altar, quote, that I may be found in him not having my own righteousness, end quotes. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. It is true we may look to our graces as evidences of salvation, but to Christ's blood only as the cause. In time of Noah's flood, all that trusted to the high hills and trees, and not to the ark, were drowned, quote, looking unto Jesus, end quote, and so look unto him as to believe him, and so Christ may not only be united to our nature, but to our persons. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, quote, that believing you may have life through his name, end quote. John chapter 20, verse 21. Use 3. In Jesus Christ, God and man, in one person, this as it shows the dignity of believers, that they are nearly related to the one of the greatest persons, that is, quote, in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, End quote. So it is of unspeakable comfort. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. Christ's two natures being married together, the divine and human. All that Christ in either of his natures can do for believers he will do. In his human nature he prays for them. In his divine nature he merits for them. Note, we believe Watson might better have said, quote, the greatest person that is, was, or ever will be, end quote. Use 4. Admire the love of Christ our Mediator, that he should humble himself and take our flesh, that he might redeem us. Believers should put Christ in their bosom, as the spouse did, quote, lie betwixt my breasts, end quote. What was said of Ignatius? that the name of Jesus was found in his heart, should be verified of every saint. 
he should have Jesus Christ written in his heart. Stillwater's Revival Books is now located at PuritanDownloads.com. It's your worldwide online Reformation home for the very best in free and discounted classic and contemporary Puritan and Reformed books, MP3s, and videos. For much more information on the Puritans and Reformers, including the best free and discounted classic and contemporary books, MP3s, digital downloads, and videos, please visit Stillwater's Revival Books at PuritanDownloads.com. Stillwater's Revival Books also publishes the Puritan Hard Drive, the most powerful and practical Christian study tool ever produced. All thanks and glory be to the mercy, grace, and love of the Lord Jesus Christ for this remarkable and wonderful new Christian study tool. The Puritan Hard Drive contains over 12,500 of the best Reformation books, MP3s, and videos ever gathered onto one portable Christian study tool. An extraordinary collection of Puritan, Protestant, Calvinistic, Presbyterian, Covenanter, and Reformed Baptist resources. It's fully upgradable and it's small enough to fit in your pocket. The Puritan hard drive combines an embedded database containing many millions of records with the most amazing and extraordinary custom Christian search and research software ever created. The Puritan hard drive has been produced to assist you in the fascinating and exhilarating spiritual, intellectual, familial, ecclesiastical, and societal adventure that is living the Christian life. It has been specifically designed so that you might more faithfully know, serve, and love the Lord Jesus Christ, as well as to help you to do all you can to bring glory to His great name. If you want to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, then the Puritan hard drive is for you. Visit PuritanDownloads.com today for much more information on the Puritan hard drive and to take advantage of all the free and discounted Reformation and Puritan books, MP3s, and videos that we offer at Stillwater's Revival Books.